Ted the bear finally ties the knot with his girlfriend Tammy Lynn, with their loved ones in attendance. The newlyweds were greeted with thunderous applause as they entered the wedding reception, while John sat alone feeling awkward. He and Lori had been divorced for six months, and Lori was now just an ex-wife. Sam Jones approached John and Ted, trying to entice them with drugs, but Ted, now a family man, declined. Today was the happiest day of his life. However, a year later, it seems that this happy couple is starting to have problems. The two of them argued like crazy, with neither willing to give in. With each passing day, their words grew heavier, the couple throwing objects and sparking arguments that involved the entire neighborhood. Ted sought solace with John, despite being frustrated with many things, he only wanted to mend his family. A bartender colleague tried to seduce John, but he declined. Today, Ted had to deal with a rather eccentric customer, but never mind that, Ted and his wife still haven't made up. A co-worker suggested they have a child to reconnect their family. Ted took the initiative to apologize to Tammy Lynn and expressed his desire to have a child with her. Tammy Lynn was ecstatic as she had long dreamed of becoming a mother. However, how to proceed remained uncertain. Ted also confided in his best friend, intending to seek sperm donation, considering Sam Jones. John believed it was a good idea, suggesting that Ted's child might become a superhero. Ted immediately took action, borrowing John's computer, only to be startled by its content filled with pornographic films. Ted warned John to leave the house and interact with people immediately, as being indoors was driving them both crazy. John, determined to change his habits, smashed the laptop. However, they still weren't at peace, deciding to bury its remains deep beneath the ocean floor. Returning to their quest for sperm donation, the two approached Sam Jones, but, but he had to decline their request due to past substance abuse issues that had tragically claimed the lives of most of his children. John and Ted, infuriated, accidentally kicked the car door of Sam Jones in their haste to leave. Panicked, they continued to devise a plan for a new target. John disguised himself as a delivery guy and went to Tom's house. He then sneaked to the back of the house and broke the air conditioner. At night, Tom felt hot and had to open his door. In the middle of the night, two men took advantage of the opportunity to sneak into Tom's house with the intention of stealing sperm. However, their plan did not go anywhere because they both shirked the responsibility of doing it. In the end, John had to take action. He lifted the blanket, revealing a bright, sparkling light. Tom woke up, startled, and easily threw both thieves to the ground. John led Ted away and started asking his friend why he didn't ask for his help. Ted confessed that John was actually the first person he thought of, but he didn't dare ask because he saw John was devastated after the divorce. John affirmed that he was always ready to help his best friend. Ted was happy and grateful. Consider the problem solved, the duo headed to Boston IVF. John entered the sperm collection room. While waiting for his friend, Ted went to the bathroom and accidentally passed by the sperm storage room. Ted met a young enthusiastic doctor who showed him around the room. A while later, John also brought down the sperm sample. At this time, the doctor had to go out for an emergency. John teased Ted. Ted, without thinking, threw a jar in the room in retaliation. To make amends, John knocked over the entire cabinet. In a moment of desperation, Ted took a picture and posted it on Facebook. The beautiful nurse came in, shocked but relieved because it was a rejected sample due to a blood cell disease. Well, well, who do we have here? It seems like a new character, but it's actually the old villain from the first part, Donnie, who is now working as a janitor in a large building. Donnie is still as goofy and perverted as ever. The newlywed couple Tammy Lynn received the devastating news that she could not get pregnant. Due to her past history of drug use, her uterus was damaged. This was the first case the doctor had ever seen, so fertilization was impossible. The heartbroken couple left the clinic. They decided to adopt, but their history of drug use made the center wary. However, that was not the most important thing. The US authorities did not recognize Ted as a human being, which prevented them from adopting. Both of them were shocked. The duo left empty-handed. Before leaving, the woman warned Ted about the seriousness of the safety issue going forward, as it seemed he had been on the government's radar for a while. She urged them to always be careful and vigilant. Ted's adoption had raised their alarm. John rushed to the supermarket when he saw Ted's message. His colleagues were also confused on Ted's behalf. A while later, the manager called Ted in for a talk. The Department of Labor had called the store, and he was forced to fire Ted for being considered an illegal worker. In quick succession, Ted's bank account was frozen, he was kicked out of his clubs, and even his marriage to Tammy Lynn was no longer recognized. It was a nightmare. Ted and John decided to hire a lawyer to sue the government, but it was not an easy case to win. On top of that, they didn't have the money to pay. The lawyer assigned the case to his intern niece. So Ted would have a young and enthusiastic lawyer, but one who lacked experience. 
At first, they didn't trust each other, but as soon as they saw her pull out her pipe and take a hit, they quickly sat down at the table to discuss business. After a few words, they were all gathered together smoking. Samantha, despite being a lawyer, also hated the drug prohibition law. They went to the library to read and research diligently, determined to regain their human rights. Gradually, they became close friends, going out, studying, teasing each other, and smoking together. Donnie, upon hearing that Ted was going to court to claim his rights, immediately went to meet the director of the toy company. Donnie suggested that they could bring Ted back as a test subject to mass produce walking teddy bears. This would bring the company billions of dollars in profits, but for that to happen, Ted had to lose the lawsuit. Ted's family now could only rely on Tammy Lynn's income to make ends meet. He even had to resort to prostitution. Samantha agreed to come to Ted's house for dinner. The couple deliberately left space for Samantha and John. The two chatted idly, then all four went upstairs to play a game of throwing apples at people walking by. On the day of the court hearing, they all entered the processing room. Samantha's opponent was Shep Wilde, a famous lawyer who had never lost a case. He was sent by the company. Shep Wilde stood up and made the first convincing speech. Donnie also came to attend today. Next, Samantha stood up to speak. Even though this was her first time arguing in court, Samantha's sharp words were also worth. The trial officially begins. John was exposed by Shep Wilde to fatal weaknesses, forcing John to admit that Ted was bought from a toy store. The teddy bear Ted went crazy and lost control of his language, almost being kicked out of the room by the judge. It was Ted's turn to testify. Ted gradually won back everyone's favor, proving that he could love and have consciousness. The trial also included the presence of a toy store employee. The electronic board attached to Ted's chest was broken, all proving that Ted came from the store. News of the lawsuit was posted everywhere, many TV channels talked about this topic and all agreed that Ted had no human rights. While waiting for the court's verdict, the crowd of reporters outside the door had filled the entire staircase. The judge concluded that Ted was not a human being. Ted and his family officially lost the lawsuit. Ted is now considered a legal property. Donnie smirked and left the room, taking on the task of catching the bear for the company. Back home, everyone was in despair. But Samantha suddenly came up with a plan. She remembered the best human rights lawyer in America, Megan. Thinking is doing, she immediately called his office. Perhaps this case was too famous, he agreed to meet them, even though he knew they didn't have the money to hire him. On a clear morning, the three of them packed their bags and headed to New York. Samantha was a little tired, so Ted took over driving. She and John should be lucky, as they didn't have to witness Ted's erratic driving. Suddenly, a cigarette butt fell on Ted, causing him to drive the car down the hill and crash straight into a wooden house. They were forced to spend the night in the middle of nowhere. John went to look for firewood and accidentally saw a fresh marijuana leaf. Turning to the right, in front of the two of them was a whole field of marijuana. All three thought they were in heaven. Ted went to find something to smoke. John and the lawyer had a small heart-to-heart -heart talk by the fire. The bear returned with a cowboy hat, a gun, and a guitar. Samantha played a melodious guitar song, her voice gentle and emotional. The small animals in the forest also had to come out to see. John looked at her with adoring eyes. Strangely enough, there were even lobsters in the forest. The two kissed under the moonlight. Early in the morning, they took the car and continued their journey. They finally arrived at Megan's office. Megan announced that he could not help with this case. Because the important thing about being human is to contribute to society and make the race better. Ted had not done anything like that. His history was all about drugs. The fact that they lost the lawsuit was not due to weak arguments, but because the emotions of the people around Ted were negative. The three of them sat down in a daze on the sidewalk. John comforted Samantha with a kiss. Bear Ted was upset and left. There was a costume party nearby, and Donnie was there too. Ted wandered around the shed in frustration. A ninja turtle approached and asked to take a picture with him, but he asked him to go to the back. The ninja turtle slowly took off his head and turned around. Ted was startled and scared when he saw it was Donnie. He ran quickly into the crowd, snatched a phone, and called John to report the situation. Donnie saw him at this time and chased after him. There was now a stall of mixed real and fake teddy bears in front of him. Donnie muttered and sang something. He successfully tricked Ted into revealing his true form, and Donnie grabbed him and knocked him unconscious. He brought Ted to the director, who was also introducing a new product in the area. John and Samantha were frantically searching. They bumped into Guy, who had just seen Ted walking with the two men. In the mysterious room below the basement, Ted was tied tightly to an iron bed. Donnie held a knife and prepared to execute him. Ted kept using words to manipulate Donnie's mind. Outside the hall, people were fighting like crazy. It started with Sam Jones. 
Seeing John, he rushed over to demand compensation for damaging his car. When they were done, John and Samantha ran into the hallway. They found the room where Ted was being held, and John punched Donnie. Then the three of them ran outside. The relationship was back to the way it was before. But the matter was not over yet. From a distance, Donnie cut a string. A UFO model flew in and aimed at Ted. John saw it and rushed out to catch it. He was hit and flew straight into the electronic board. Ted knew exactly who was behind this. He pointed to the Ninja Turtle. But in fact, there were five of them. Ted immediately took out his phone and played the legendary song. The ninja in the red scarf immediately twerked and danced. So Donnie was arrested. But John still didn't wake up. Ted was heartbroken and sad and thought. In the hospital, he suddenly took a turn for the worse. They could only wait outside for information from the doctor. The doctor came out and announced that John would not survive. Everyone could only see him one last time. Samantha sadly kissed him on the forehead. Ted was in tears. Ted felt terrible for letting John save him. But at this moment, John woke up. The whole group gasped. It turned out to be a joke between him and the doctor. Suddenly, lawyer Megan was standing right outside the door. After seeing the incident on TV, he agreed to take Ted's case. There was a crowd around the courthouse again. With strong arguments and deep knowledge, lawyer Megan successfully brought human rights to Ted. Everyone was happy. In front of everyone, Ted proposed to Tammy Lynn again. The episode ends here. Thank you for watching the video. See you next time.